And I started to do client testimonials in the heat of the moment, right after the finance on the showroom floor. Do you feel comfortable based off your experience today to send your family and friends to me when they're in the market for a vehicle? And I have it all on video. Welcome to the Millionaire Car Salesman Podcast, the number one resource for automotive sales professionals, managers, and owners to learn how to make money, accumulate wealth, and to all out ball out in the auto industry. And now your hosts, Sean V. Bradley and L.A. Williams. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is L.A. Williams, and I am here on the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast. And um, I'm not going to say who you don't hear because that's a whole nother conversation, right? <laughs> I finally trapped them again. You know what I'm saying? No, no. Sean is traveling. And so we are, I'm today having a great conversation with um, a good friend of mine, man. This cat, man, we've been bouncing ideas back and forth off each other for years now. Um, and so he's doing his thing, man, helping tons and tons of dealers, uh, working with Builder Brand. He came from selling cars down in Texas where the Internet Sales 20 Group is going to be held. So that's in Houston, Texas. So I don't know if he was in Houston or not, but either way, I want everybody to give it up and get ready for a great conversation with my main man, Mr. Cameron Moore. What's up, fam? What's up? What's up? <laughs> I feel this like I was hearing the, the crowd just like, oh, Cameron's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's so funny because I do, uh, sometimes I do that with the uh, the background. You might have, you probably heard the podcast where yeah. the background. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. But obviously this is the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast and we talk about making money, right? So mm -hmm. it's about, about the cha-ching, you know. And so the conversation I want to have, there's a whole lot of stuff that I want to talk to you about, man, because you got so much value to add to people. And I know your story is just absolutely awesome. And I know it's still unfolding. Um, but just tell us where your story began, how this whole thing gets started for you. Um, so Adam and Eve in the Bible. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, my story began in the automotive industry. Wow. 2016. Okay. Um, maybe the how, do you even, how do you even get in it? Because I don't know many people that say, mommy, daddy, I want to be in the automotive industry. Yeah, so that's a, that's a funny story. So I was actually working uh, for a convenience store, a uh, quick trip, a really nice convenience store in Dallas, Fort Worth area. Mm -hmm. And I met, you know, the girl of my dreams that I've had a crush on since I was 16. And she happened to live in uh, our hometown. And so I was like, well, I know I want to marry her. So I might have to go back. And when I went back, the only um, opportunity I had was, you know, to basically sell cars and make the kind of money I was making in Dallas Fort Worth. But funny story is when I first applied to the job, I did not get it. Wow. Um, and I applied and, you know, I was working night shift and all of a sudden, you know, my father-in-law was good friends with the owner. And so I, I applied, their manager reached out to me the next day, which happened to be when I went to sleep. <laughs> and it was at like seven something in the morning. And so of course I answered and I was like, hello. And he's like, it's someone, something from Hyundai. And I was like, man, call me back later. So <laughs> you can imagine um, the gentleman was probably pretty upset. Right. Um, but also, yeah, I was working nights. So that didn't really work out. Well, I happened to get an email a few days later that I don't think was supposed to be sent to me. And the email basically said, um, Cameron, does not show that he is, you know, basically motivated <laughs> or, um, you know, wanting to do this. He's not ambitious about it. And he does not seem like a perfect fit for us. So I immediately, um, I actually drove from Dallas, uh, the, the earlier, the day before that to go see my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to go up there. Like, cause I know what I, I know what I'm capable of. Right. And, and when someone you know, tells me, too. yeah. Right. So when someone tells me, that I'm not, you know, ambitious or I, I won't do this or whatever the case may be. I like to prove people wrong. That's just how I am. Yo, um, you might have just stumbled upon a great HR tip, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so then I went up to his office and I just, you know, said, hey, uh, I'm Cameron. And he goes, come to my office. And so I said, let me explain the situation so you can understand why um, when you called, I, you know, didn't know who you were and I was completely tired. Um, cause I just worked, you know, 10 hours at night. And so I told him and he's like, um, you know, thank you for coming up, but you know, we just have better applicants than you. And to, yeah. you know, basically elaborate on what he said, better applicants, which they did is if you classify someone being a better applicant due to the fact that they have sold cars in the past, 
by all means, yes, they had better applicants. However, when you were like, well, better applicants such as my drive, my ambition, my willingness to never give up, in my, in my own opinion, you didn't have better applicants. Mm-hmm. So three months later, boom, I get a call. They asked me to come. I'm like, heck yeah, let's do this. And, you know, because everyone talks about selling cars, making money. So I go, you know, first week we had some training. I can, you know, our dealership actually trained us, which is cool because not a lot of people get training out there. Mm-hmm. And so they're walking us through. We watched a lot of Joe Berte's videos and um, didn't really hit it for me because I don't learn that way. Right. Um, so we, we they're like, you know, let's talk about prospecting and referrals. And I'm like, what? <laughs> because I have a bachelor's of science in criminal justice. That's why I graduated with my degree in. Gotcha. And so I always wanted to be like a, a spy, right? It never happened. <laughs> but so I didn't know anything about that. And, and then like, I'm like, all right, let's go for it. So I, I start doing what they're teaching me. And I'm at the Hyundai store and I had a really good manager, Andre, taught me a lot. And then come to find out selling cars is really hard. Mm. And you know, all I did was focus on product knowledge. Um, the reason why I focused so much on it is because I believe you should know your product um, when you're talking to someone. If not, I believe, I mean, it's just not real. So right. I studied product. I knew all of our inventory, ins and outs, every trade we have come in, the colors, the, the packages. So I could tell you everything. And then, so when I'm talking to a customer, I was just so excited about features. They're like, hey, let's check out this accent. You know, that's what we can afford. I'm like, bro, have you seen the Genesis though? It has this. <laughs> and so I didn't really understand you know, right. how to listen to customers. That's where my journey started. And then I ended up uh, getting an opportunity to go to a BMW and Mercedes store at the same dealership. Um, family, uh, the, the dealership had 13 different locations. So mm-hmm. I got transferred over there. And that's when I was a green pea in a store where everyone had like 15 plus years at the store. Wow. And yeah, so that's kind of where this journey began. Man, awesome stuff. All right. So when you finally figured it out, right, how many cars, talk about what you first started doing and then what you were able to get to selling cars. So um, I was starting off like one to two, you know, I got five. <laughs> I remember that time I hit six. I'm like, what? <laughs> in a month. <laughs> yeah. in a month. Yeah. Oh, and boy. so um, then I moved over to the Mercedes store. I ended up triple my sales after, you know, using you know, what we'll be talking about later, which I currently work for the company. Um, And so, you know, top sales, it was around, you know, 15 plus a little bit like around there. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it was all about gross to me. So a lot of people, I feel like talk about, you know, you're selling 20, 30, 40 cars, which is awesome. Some people do it and hold gross, but a lot of people do it just by just giving away the car. Right. And it's all about holding gross. Mini, mini, and mini, so my, my worst month, I mean, I can tell you my worst month was like four cars. And I made four grand. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. Good stuff. So, so now the whole situation is, so then you obviously started working, you know, around that time is the internet department's happening. So talk about your involvement with the internet department. Yes. So I actually, uh, I loved the internet department. And so our BDC was set up from different from most um, that I know of today, but basically how it happened is the internet lead came in and we got a bunch through BMW and Mercedes, a lot of people trying to export, which they were easy to tell. Um, but so they would call in and most of the people, you know, the salespeople would answer, try to work or whatever, wouldn't update the BDC people. And so I, you know, I heard them complain about it, the BDC girl. So I'd go over there and take them cookies. <laughs> I mean, I would talk to them. And then, so when they send me someone, I updated them all the time. Right. Like, hey, just so you know, and one of my good, you know, good friends that was in CRM, she actually passed away, you know, um, but her name's Cindy. She's an older lady. Mm-hmm. And I'd call him, but Hey, Cindy, this is what happened. I'm going to put the notes in the CRM, check it out. I'll give you everything that we talked about. So when she called, she was updated. So I used it. I didn't see it as, um, Oh, it's me versus them. It was more like, Hey, this could be a partnership. Yes. Like this is team. They got paid off of appointment showed and sold. Whereas I got paid off, you know, basically if they sold and I kept the gross to myself. Mm-hmm. That's some beautiful stuff. Yeah, they were a huge benefit to me. Man, you're going to have all of the, you know, folks trying to clone you, man, because (laughs) like you said, internet departments, it's so funny because nobody really worries about what they're complaining about, but it's it's how life works, right? If you solve a problem, right? And so that BDC had a certain problem. If you solve a problem, you're going to be rewarded for it. And Mm -hmm. so that's life, man. That's awesome stuff. All right. So I hear you talking about um, maintaining gross. And so there are definitely a bunch of millionaire car salesmen, listeners out there that are like, how do I maintain gross? Because of course we want to sell lots of cars, but we want to maintain gross. We don't want them all to be minis, right? Minis are cool. And we, you know, that's because you obviously want to build some relationships. You want to do some stuff, but we also want to make some money. So how does, how does that happen? 
Um, I think it all starts with building value. Um, you know, I, I've listened to many, many trainers. And when I was selling cars, I was the guy that was at home on night watching YouTube, you know, listening to Shaka Dyson, Sean Bradley, I read Sean Bradley's book like three times. You know, I, I stumbled across your videos, LA. And so like, I just kept wanting to learn. And my, my thing was that I got from all of it was pretty much building value under yeah. understanding, um, you know, kind of a structure of a deal. Right. And then also being able to kind of uh, build that confidence in myself when, when someone comes in and they basically say, Hey, that's not what's going to happen to, you know, stand my ground and not have to be the person to say, let me go grab my manager. Mm. Because once you do that, you basically just take all of that power away from yourself and saying that you're not the decision maker. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted them, you know, it took me many, many times of messing up and realizing um, that I just needed to basically be the decision maker. And if they were, you know, giving me, presenting me something that was absolutely just insane, which there's not a lot of money and, you know, new cars, we all know that, but if they were way far apart, it'd be like, Hey, look, there's no way that our dealerships is far apart. You know, we definitely took in the most trades in the North Texas area and, you know, we value your business and, you know, we definitely want to value your trade, um, give you the most for that. And so I would then, you know, basically let's come up with a, you know, a reasonable number that benefits my manager and also you. Um, so then we can just basically, you get the car you want, my manager's happy, everyone's happy. That really helped me a lot. And then asking for the business um, without being scared really helped get a commitment out of it. Um, but again, just holding gross, I think it all comes down to building value mm -hmm. and, um, and being very direct with what you say without any hesitation because mm. uh, if you tell me, Hey, you know, it's around $400. Well, you blew around. That means like what? 300. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, be very stern with what you say. And that's what worked for me. Yes, man. Listen, so I just turned 38 years old and I put on my what? Facebook page. Yeah, man. I put on my Facebook page. I said that um, one of the reasons I think that people don't win uh, in life. And I figured out over the last year is that people don't have heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they can't be direct with people. They can't, you know, jump in when it seems scary. Right. They always right. back down everybody. That's and that's not the key to, to success in life as far as I found it so far. Mm -hmm. So I totally agree with that. So talk to people because they said you, you were able to triple your sales. You was I mean, yeah. a good number. Right. Like yes, as far sir. as the money that was in your pocket. Um, and so you said it was by working with the company um, that you currently work with now, which is Builder Brand. Right. Yes, sir. All right. So talk about some of the best practices. How did you even get into that? Kind of, you know, talk yeah. about the introduction to it all. So how I got into it, uh, funny enough, is uh, I went to a Jonathan Dawson conference. Um, and, you know, there's tons of other Smart speakers guy. there. Yeah, he's a good, good guy. Mm -hmm. And I saved up $1,200 for my birthday. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to go and educate myself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's weird. But my parents always that's told what winners me, do, you gotta, baby. Hey, you got to spend money to make money. And I was willing to spend money on myself to, you know, basically, what's that saying? Yeah, you could teach people uh, to fish where they could eat for a lifetime or you could give them fish, whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, so I spent money to do this and go to that. And that's where I happened to meet Brian Chapman, the owner of Builder Brand and also uh, Homer Skelton Ford. And so he has, you know, four different locations. And we were talking and he was just like, hey, I have something coming up. I'd love for you to be a beta tester for me. I'm like, all right, cool. So, you know, I go back to my Texas town, start doing my thing. All of a sudden, you know, I get the text like, hey, it's happening. I go to my GM and I'm like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. This company is going to, you know, give me my own website and it's going to allow me to really build my own business. And uh, my GM was really awesome. John Olgen, huge shout out to him because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing today. Hmm. And he just said, you know what, go for it. He's like, I'll, you know, I'll take the heat, just go for it. And so I went for it. And I mean, i basically did what I was supposed to do. You know, you hire salespeople um, to build their own business, right? And you hire them to build mm -hmm. a pipeline of leads and referrals, but then some of them don't even know how to do it. If they're green peas like me, it's like, how do you do it? And so this allowed me to have all the tools I need to truly build a business within a business. And it got to the point where I'm walking around the, you know, the dealership, I see trash on the floor. I'm like, <laughs> it's my my dealership was <laughs> trash on the floor. Exactly. And it, it was mine. Like it, I, it, it made me feel like I had something. It wasn't just like, he's an employee there. It's like, Hey, that's come see camera.com hashtag dash cam diaries. Like go see Cameron. Like that mm -hmm. was me. And so I started to, you know, build my own business and brand and creating my own videos. I, I read Sean Bradley's book and I, you know, I was like, all right, so I'm going to, 
you know, do this. Chapter five is all about video SEO. And mm -hmm. so one of my videos uh, now has over like 89,000 views on YouTube. Um, I got four sales from that video. And then I started getting into my hashtag dash cam diaries. And I started to do client testimonials in the heat of the moment, right after the finance on the showroom floor and asked him, you know, the Scrooge effect, how was your experience buying in the past? I let them answer. How's your experience today pursuing with me? And they, they tell me, you know, the nice compliments. And then of course I thank them. And then in the last part is like, you know, uh, the last question I asked for you or have for you is, do you feel comfortable based off your experience today to send your family and friends to me when they're in the market for a vehicle? And I have it all on video. Mm -hmm. And so I can't lie about this. I, it's not something made up. I don't ever edit the videos. And then I put them out there. And so one of the best ones was my, my girl, Mama Morgan. This girl was awesome. <laughs> and we, we were loud in the showroom floor. So I don't know if you've ever been to a BMW Mercedes showroom floor. It's quiet sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We were loud. Like we were inside <laughs> the car and they could hear us everywhere. Um, but that video was just awesome. And literally within that same day, it was like almost 3,000 views. I got, you know, four referrals from her that same day. And so that's kind of the transition, how I got into Builder Brand, how I started using it, just creating blogs and showing my expertise and how I'm a true professional, which a lot of people say they're a professional. Mm -hmm. and it's a very loosely used term yep. because I believe a professional is someone that goes above and beyond, someone that's doing what no one else will do and someone that's literally putting in grinding. Like, you know, if you're working eight to five, like you need to be there like seven to nine, not all the time, but you know, you're really out there trying to hustle and trying to make money and educate yourself to become a professional. Um, Absolutely, man. It is so funny that you say that. This is like a perfect segue to our sponsor, the Internet Sales 20 Group. So let me just let y'all check out something real quick. Hold on. Attention car people. There's a difference between being a car salesman or car saleswoman versus being an automotive sales professional. As a matter of fact, there are people that are actually millionaire car salesmen in our industry. That's right. They're making anywhere from $150,000 a year to a half a million dollars a year to a million dollars a year selling cars on the showroom floor. And they don't have to be shady. What they're doing is they're building a raving fan base. They're getting tons of referrals. They're treating car sales like it's their own business and you can too. So go to internetsales20group.com. That's internetsales20group.com and use promo code iHeartMedia19 to start your journey in selling more cars more often and more profitably. This conference is happening November 11th through the 13th. So go visit the website now, internetsales20group.com or call 866-TEXAS-CAR. That's 866-839-2722 on everybody we're back and i got my man cameron moore man and we just getting things heated up and so we've been talking about you know what did he do to become successful uh he said he was loud in the bmw showroom oh my gosh like <laughs> it's crazy stuff so that obviously it benefited you right sometimes I, I think the problem uh that people have is that they don't eh, i say you know there's two types of thinking in the world you got rules are meant to be followed and rules are meant to be broken you know what i'm saying yeah and so i'm the kind of person that will definitely bend those dag or i want to push stuff to the limit as much as i possibly can and then a lot of times there's these unwritten rules uh because i'm sure nobody ever said okay you gotta be quiet in the showroom you know what I mean? <laughs> that just, it was what it was and so you you know you were different and you know kind of just built your own thing and so that was kind of cool but what are some of the most common mistakes that you watch people make in the automotive industry Ooh, that's a that's a good one um so i i would say in my own opinion um my own opinion I need to clearly state that <laughs> I believe that the most common mistakes that I see salespeople do is first off, uh, not following up with their customers. Hmm. Um, and I really don't like the word customer. I really like the word client because customer seems like a transaction where a client is a relationship. Yes. And I believe it's all about relationship building. That's what I sold off of. So, you know, follow up with your, your clients and people are like, well, I don't know how to follow up. Uh, there's tons of ways. Uh, have you heard of video messages? Mm. You know, and so like when I was sending videos and doing videos like two years ago, um, everyone's like, you need to quit being, you know, doing that on the phone and get on the, uh, or yeah, quit video and get on the phone or email someone. And it's like, <laughs> do you not understand? I can reach more people mm -hmm. with, you know, a lower cost right here. So my ROI is a lot better right here on my phone. Um, so yeah, following up with customers is definitely one. And then also um, just building an experience. Oh my gosh, yo, LA. So check this out. This is a personal um, a story. My wife mm -hmm. wanted to go get this car, this particular car. So we went to this dealership. We got, the salesman was awesome at the start. 
And he, I think he's still awesome. Let me just say that. Um, so as you know, we go through the transaction, he was great. We had no problem with the figures. I understand they got to make money. So I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, hustle right. anyone on the money. Mm-hmm. So we get to the part where it's like, I just wanted the, the navigation disc, like for the car, like that's it. Right. So they're like, yeah, we can do that. So here's, here's the biggest thing. So this is why you should follow up with the customers, but also build an experience. Like he never called me to tell me the, the disc, the, the update on the disc. Mm-hmm. And so I had to keep calling him finally two weeks later, I could have ordered this on Amazon, had it in two days. Cause I got prime, mm-hmm. but you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't do it. So that just built a bad experience in my head. And I gave him a phenomenal, I reached the word limit on Google. I don't know. Right. I didn't even know there's a word limit on their Google review. I gave him a great review. Um, so yeah, following up the customers, building an experience from start to finish, the way you're prospecting, the way you're going throughout the cell. Like when you ask a customer, uh, they ask where the bathroom's at, don't point, mm-hmm. get up and walk them walk. there. Yes. God, you talk about being a professional, that's being professional. Hold the doors open. You know, when someone schedules a, v, a appointment, a VIP appointment, have something inside the window, vehicle reserved for Mr. and Miss, right? Mm-hmm. Ask them if they need a beverage. If it's hot outside, start the car. Like you don't want it all hot and sweaty. Make sure there's no lights on, the air, tires are aired up. Like, and stuff that I think is common sense, most don't. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, uh, let's see. So we got, you know, following up, we got building an experience. Man, lastly, I would just say a common mistake is expecting this up bus that everyone talks about to magically just show up. <laughs> like it is not coming. I'm so sorry to tell you, but who even rides the bus anymore? I don't know. But <laughs> what you need to do is you need to get out there and prospect to yourself. The funniest thing I've ever heard anyone say, some guy said, there's no, there's not been any leads. I go, why is that? And he's like, well, you know, the dealership doesn't have any leads to come in. I go, is it the dealership's job to get you leads? Oh yeah. I go, that's where you're wrong. It's you not. Go. If there you, you expect the dealership to get you leads and, and then you're going to sit here and complain that you have to people with terrible credit or whatever the case may be, that's only your fault. It is only your fault because you could get out there and you could prospect, you could find your niche market of people you want to work with and deal with. So then the only person that you could blame if it doesn't work is well, still you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's, people that's don't it. people don't want to take responsibility, right? And that, that's the one thing. See, you know, middle class always want to play the victim. And I'm talking mm-hmm. about I'm talking about mindset. I'm not talking about you know as socioeconomical background and that type of stuff. But world class man, they hold them. They see themselves as responsible. And so I totally feel where you're coming from on that. And that's one of the things about me is I always do everything in my power to take responsibility. Call me the blind phone master, right? It's like, so what? All right, so what if you're blind, right? And if anybody who's seen my uh, the promo for our webinar coming up, man, it's like, you know, so what? I'm, so what if you're blind? You're a car salesman. Right. Everybody going to take, anybody going to have sympathy for you, right? right. <laughs> you yeah. got to go out and get everything in life. Um, and so that was really, really good stuff. So um, those are some super duper, like you said, common mistakes. Uh, when you talk about follow-up, man, follow-up is a problem. I think with all salespeople in every business, it's so rewarding when you actually do it. Uh, my wife and I have a personal story. When we, uh, after we got married, we said, you know, we're going to get ourselves a nice uh, Tempur-Pedic bed, right? So we went to the mm-hmm. uh, the little mall store and everything. And so we was checking them out and trying to see. And so we told the guy, all right, so we were going to Punta Cana. And then when we get back, you know, reach out to us in the next two weeks. And then we're going to, you know, come get the bed. Well, no phone calls, no nothing, right? And so we happen to be in the mall, I think a week is three weeks later. And we were just like, all right, well, we're just going to go see it one more time, right? You know how you tell yourself. Right. right? Just going to go see it one more time. And then we left, right? With the, with the you know, the lady, she did everything, you know, got the find. It was just like everything was cool. And we ended up leaving, getting to bed. And it was like, what happened to such and such, right? Oh, hey, I don't see his name. He ain't put his name on. Like, he didn't even, I just felt like either you didn't take us seriously. He ended up calling me. This was November uh, when we had our wedding. And then he ended up calling me in January sometime. Like, <laughs> What? Are you serious? You blew it. You absolutely yeah. blew it. So 100 percent man. So all right, talk about um, you know, being successful. Because obviously, you know, working with Build a Brand, what are some of the things that a person can do now to create some habits to be successful? I know obviously you want to re you want to reverse engineer the mistakes that people make. Um, but some talk about some of the specific things that people can do now using even using your product, right? What what are some mm-hmm. of the things that they can do? So uh, what I teach people to do um, is basically like, you got to change the culture. You got to change. It's, you know, like when you work out and it was like, it takes two weeks, you know, <laughs> and then you work out and like that never works out for me because look, I just love bread too much. Right. 
but you really have to create those good habits. So what I teach people to do and something I did when I sold cars and I still do this day is every day I get to work, I have five of my top things I need to get done written on a piece of paper next to my desk. Hmm. So, you know, in the order, and I got that from the ultimate sales machine by Chet Holmes. It's a phenomenal book. And so, you know, I write those down. And then as I accomplishment, you know, accomplish those, I check it off and I feel accomplished. Like I feel like I've done something. Mm. And so like, you know, creating good habits of when you're starting work, like what you're doing. And every time you have a customer, how are you following up with them? I teach our people to send videos. So if you came up just for service, a previous customer, you're still going to get a video. If you came up and you're an up and you're just quote unquote randomly looking, which that's why you have the internet to look and, and then you leave, well, you're going to get a video message. Mm -hmm. And so everything you're doing um, with every follow-up with that customer, you know, do it that way. And then also asking for, you know, reviews from your customers. And a lot of people are like, well, why would I get a review? I thought the same thing when I was selling cars, they're like, Hey, can you get us a review? I'm like, no, um, because it doesn't help me. And I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then Mercedes Benz like, yo, you get a thousand, you get a hundred dollars. Guess who got a review? Everyone. <laughs> because I got money. But then now I've learned all I'm doing is, is building um, this top of mind awareness of myself and validating the experience that I pro provide for my current clients and then also my future clients. And so getting reviews from those and then also asking for referrals. Every customer you sell a car to, they have family members and friends. Mm. And then those friends and family have other family members and friends. So why would you not ask for referrals from every single customer? A lot of people wait a day or two after. I think that's ridiculous. Mm. I think that's just crazy. You need to be asking for it like Before they planting leave. seeds the entire <laughs> time of the sale. The walk, you're doing a walk around like, oh, one of my referrals I recently had. Like, don't lie, but <laughs> right, right, right. You know, plant seeds the entire time. So when you do get to the point when you're asking for the referrals, like, you know, after you just got the review or you're doing a video testimonial, which you should highly do, then all of a sudden, like you're asking for referrals and guess what? They're going to feel a little bit more uh, willing to give you those referrals than if you just randomly threw them on at the end or you call two days later saying, hey, can I have a list of all your contacts? Right. <laughs> like, that's weird. Like, it is. <laughs> Oh yeah. So Man. those are the things that I think people should do. And then also, um, you know, providing like every, okay. I'm just going to say this. Uh, you know, i watched tons of Gary V and all these other people and, you know, Gary V had one that's like content's King, which mm -hmm. I completely agree with. And a lot of people post just to post, to check something off the list, mm -mm. but they're not getting real engagement. And they're like, Oh, I got like a thousand views. You got zero likes, zero comments. That doesn't even matter. <laughs> Like, I'm exactly. so sorry, but like, you need to get engagement. When someone comments on something, you need to comment back and ask another question, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's what you need to do, in my own opinion, what I teach our people that have our platform, our clients. And so, you know, building those good habits and having a plan of your own going throughout the sale and after the sale and before wow. the sale. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just entire experience, like you said earlier. Yeah. So that's some phenomenal stuff, man. So one of the things I'm also thinking about is like you talked about that dash cam, no diaries. That just sounds cool. You know what I'm saying? Right. So how does someone, you know, come up with, I mean, because it's no. like everybody has some sort of name, everybody, but that's one of the things that people struggle with. Cause it's like, I can't, I can't come up with something cool like that. What, yeah. what type of advice you got for that? Um, so just to clear, uh, that, so I appreciate that. The hashtag dash cam diaries came from two year, two and a half years ago when I was watching Bill have, he did the, you know, dashboard mm -hmm. diaries. Mm -hmm. So I called him up and I was like, yo, Bill, I really uh, like that, man. No one's doing that around where I'm at. And I was like, do you mind if I just kind of copy that, but just put dash cam? Cause my name's cam. Right. And he's like, bro, that's sick. Go for it. So I did yeah. it. And I've always had names like they, you know, kill a cam, mm -hmm. uh, funny story behind that one. But then um, you know, Cam Cam, the cheerleading man, I cheered in college. So <laughs> Cam's an cool. easy name to work with. Right. Um, I would say it's more of just, you know, going and finding, if you're trying to find something that's, you know, unique to you, um, I, that's a hard one. Cause I, I just believe like, you just gotta, I don't know, like that's, a, I can't answer that. Well, one. I like, I like what you're saying as far as borrowing stuff from people. That's yeah. kind of cool. Right. Because, you know, your name is not that much different than, you know, somebody like uh, a Deborah or something like that. Like you could find a way, you know, uh, Deborah does it better. I mean, you could do something like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. And I, I just looked up to what other people were doing across that weren't even in my market. Right. And then I was exactly. like, cause no one else is going to do that here. So like, I actually, I have, you know, videos and texts back and forth with Bill since I was selling cars. And I was like, bro, what do you think about this idea? I would get feedback from him before I post it or vice versa. And so I use my network uh, with millionaire car salesmen, with all the other groups I was a part of to basically, you know, establish what I was doing. 
Yeah, man. And see, it kind of goes back to, you know, what we're talking about. Like we are like less than six weeks away from the internet sales 20 group and being a part of the millionaire car salesman family is awesome. You know, you can do that stuff, that type of stuff on Facebook, but it's nothing like actually spending time with people. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, you've been there, the internet sales 20 group, yep. man, we get the VIP party going, man. man. <laughs> By the time you're there, Crazy. man, you just get to re- build real friendships, real, you know what I'm saying? And this is, yeah. re- and that's, that's where I think, you know, careers are really made is when you can, reach out to a, a a cam you can reach out to a bill you can reach out to a sean you can reach out to a jonathan you can reach out to these folks and just have conversation with them yeah and i mean it's educational like a mug but it's relational man and um mm-hmm. and nobody holds back i mean we we always give the absolute most up-to-date you know relevant information we can possibly give you know reach out to a you know i mean if you want to reach out to me you know <laughs> but i'm telling you so it's people that's all over the industry who are really killing it, doing exactly what it is that you want to do. So again, you know, be, become their friend, right? And learn how to do it. Because like you said, they're not, they're not, people not doing it in your market. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And then how people come up and, you know, I come from the music industry. So, you know, people are always coming up with names and, you know, saying everybody got a stage right. name. And so basically, you know, the automotive industry is like, it got to be that rock star industry. It's got to be, you know, you should have a, another, you know, if your name is Beyonce, you should have a Sasha Fierce. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. that's just how the game go. You need, it's, I think it's so important because it's, it's like your marketing. alter ego. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, it's, and it's all about marketing. So that's beautiful that's- stuff. Yeah. So now one of the books I heard you, because, you know, whenever I'm on here, we talk about books. Last week, we yeah. actually talked about books, too. And you mentioned uh, Chet Holmes' book, right? Um, yes. What's, what's another book that you would recommend? Um, uh, go ahead. Because right, you sound like you got a bunch of I was, I was ready for it, just to say. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, so, like, I'm looking. It's funny, because, uh, Ellie, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, like, I just to give you a quick little, like, elevator pitch, I didn't mm-hmm. grow up the best, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got adopted when I was 14. Um, I was always in, you know, special classes. I have ADHD and all that. I was, anyways, the bottom line is, is I let all that drive me to want to do what I'm doing now in the reading. So the reason why I started reading is because I wanted to be better. And my dad always told me that, you know, five people you hang around the most are going to be who you're in life. Yep. So who you, who you will be in life. And so I was like, well, I want to be, like, you know, the best successful people. So I basically was like, I need to read to be an expert in my field. And so I'm looking at my bookshelf right now in my office and there's just, just books, man, like just books. And looking back in college, like I didn't read, like, (laughs) you know, I worked (laughs) out and I cheered, but I got into a part where it's like, if I want to be a true professional, then I need to educate myself. So uh, the recent book that I've read past month, I've actually read it three times, um, which sounds really stupid, but however, I, I want to go back because there's things I miss. Absolutely. And, like I've read Sean Bradley's book like four times maybe, and it's just, there's things I miss. And so I want to go back and make sure I have it correct. And so it's uh, Multipliers by Liz Wiseman. And okay. I believe anyone in, in any business, regardless if it's automotive or whatever, like, and you're, you're a leader, uh, you know, that's a very loose term also, but you're a leader, you need to read this because it teaches you how to basically create and multiply like geniuses rather than being a diminisher. Mm. And I mean, it's so powerful. Like I read it and I was just like, you know, you have like a movie playing in your head and like, dang, that manager made me feel like crap. Or, you know, maybe I said something that maybe just came across the wrong way and I didn't think it was because I'm self-centered. Right. Uh, but it's like, I know how to now, you know, talk to certain people a different way and how to really drive their true inner genius out by understanding how they work and, you know, all that. So that's a good one. Um, man, there's so many. So, I mean, I would say right now, let's start them with that. Let's start okay. with the Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. And you definitely have to check out Multipliers by Liz Wiseman. It is a phenomenal book. And of course, I've always said it since day one. I even bought, actually, I bought five copies of Sean Bradley's book, Win the Game of Google Opoly. Uh, gave them to my managers. Like, I mean, so you need to definitely read Sean book, Sean's book, Win the Game of Google Opoly. And so those are the books I would suggest as of right now. Awesome, man. Totally. I, those are definitely great suggestions. And the crazy thing is I read the first one, uh, but I have not read Multiplier. So that's going to be on my list. Absolutely. Now, I've actually had dinner um, uh, with Chet Holmes's daughter came down and visited us for Builder Brand. And we all went out to dinner and she's the nicest girl, uh, Amanda Holmes. Wow. 
Awesome stuff, man. See, that's a, it's about making friends, right? Keep yeah. talking about that. <laughs> so, yeah, man, and you're 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 really killing it. And see, what people might think reading books twice or three or four times is stupid, man. But I'm telling you, see, that's the elements of training, right? When I had Brad Lee on the podcast, he talked about the four key elements to great training, right? And the first one I always say is crap training, right? Because you got to have content, right? C stands for mm-hmm. content. Got to have good content. It got to be repetitive. So you got to do it over and over and over. Right. A genius needs to hear something 150 times before they get it so how much more for the rest of us right right then the a is accountability man you got to have accountability to make sure that you are repeating it to make sure that you that that it is good content right it needs to be it kind of has to hold itself up against something right and then the last thing has got to be practice you got to practice it you got to put it into practice Mm -hmm. because if you don't it's going to be one of those things that you read it and then you know you talk to somebody about it whatever and then a month later it's down the drain right no you're going to learn this information put it into practice use it so that it can benefit your life Life. So that's that's some phenomenal stuff. So just talk about training in, in general, right? Because you can get training from books, you can get training right. from a lot of different places. How important is training? Uh, what do you what do you recommend people train on? And how often should they train? Um, so I think, you know, every person's completely different in life. Um, of course they are right but biology but and so <laughs> mine was is like i knew i knew first off what i wanted to be and i want to help people like regardless what it is when i die in this world i want people to know wow cameron's changed my life it's not it's not always about the financial thing even though money is very beneficial you, yes. you need it to live mm-hmm. and so of course i um i believe that when you follow what you you're doing the money will always follow right so mm-hmm. Um, but I believe training is very, very important. And the stuff that I really focused on was, uh, it's funny you say practice, 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 like you got repetition. Um, I, I listened to a lot of the videos that you and Sean were doing when I was selling cars and I wrote down video scripts and I still have them in my office right here, right now. Cool. And I would make my own video scripts and I would practice on my manager. And sometimes he'd be like, all right, all right. Yeah. I'm like, no, you got to hear it. Like I, I would sit there and I would practice. I would practice with my wife and my wife got to the point of like, okay, Cam, we get it. And I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> but like, the thing is, is it may have been annoying to everyone else, but I was growing and yes. I, I was growing consistently. And the, the way my brain works now is phenomenal. And I'm, I'm saying I'm a genius, but I'm just, I'm, I'm so like, I just want to learn. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's like, you know, work out. Yeah. Work your brain out. Okay. Yeah. Your brain is like everything. Like you need to be educating yourself, learning something new every single day. I watch YouTube videos at night. Like I say a LA, I'm, I probably have like really, you know, people be like, oh, it's unhealthy for you. But I probably sleep maybe three to four hours a night. We um, and me both. <laughs> yeah, man. So I'm like watching YouTube videos, trying to figure out what's the next thing. What is someone doing over here that's helping them? And how can I help that to help my clients? Mm-hmm. And so I just kept, you know, just watching videos, writing scripts down, just pages and pages of notes and practicing and then doing it all over again. Like, because it doesn't happen. And then I make videos. Like when I make a video and I mess up, I laugh at it. Because most people give up and they like that little bitty camera on their phone uh, discourage them from doing it more and more. Mm. I use that as game film. You know, like when you play football, like I didn't play football because I'm five foot five. I ain't playing football. (laughs) But when you're watching something, it's like, how do you get better? Well, you have to know where you're making mistakes. And when you make a mistake, it's like you can take it two different ways. You can let it pretty much discourage you and beat you down. Or you can take it as a learning lesson and learn something from it. So when I made mistakes, I was like, this is a coaching moment. This is a learning moment when I can learn how not to say, um, so many times, like, um, was my word. Ooh. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, um, and, um, and I'm an, um, you know, it's almost like a B. I'm, but, an, um. <laughs> yeah, I'm an, an, um, I'm just kidding. We're getting into that. But, so like, yeah, you definitely need to practice everything. You need to learn something new every day. You need to push yourself to that limit. I mean, when you think like, oh, I can't think anymore. Let me Netflix and chill. No, like don't like just stop. Like if you need to take stuff a little bit at a time, take that process it to, you know, write it down a couple of times and really understand it before you move on to the next thing. Because you can say, yeah, I've read all these books and I've done all these things. But if you didn't do anything with what you learned, if you're not applying it anywhere in your life, you're not growing. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, you are so on fire. And it's crazy because I have those conversations when I'm training people all the time, right? Because like you didn't play football, I didn't play football. Well, I did when I was a kid, right? But, mm-hmm. you know, it just, but it's it's so funny because if you look at a great football player, a great basketball player, 
don't you have that mom that's always like, oh, boy, put that ball down. Stop bouncing that ball in my house. Or, you know, you're always throwing that football. You always got that bat with you everywhere you go. Right. Because they then they become professionals. Right. So it's just so interesting uh, because I tell people if you don't have people in your life annoyed because you keep wanting to do it over and over and over again, you're probably not doing it right. Right. That's just the bottom line. So. Yeah. And I think, I think it's also your drive. Like, you know, like what's your why? Like my why, the moment I held my baby boy in my hands, my life changed forever mm. um, because I didn't want to grow up and be the, you know, I didn't have a father figure growing up. Right. So mm. I didn't want my son to to have that. And so it's my, my drive was like, I have to set an example for my son. I have to make sure there's food on the table. So it's like, if I have to stay up till 4 a.m. every morning to learn something, to become better, to set an example for him, like, I'm going to do it. And I want it bad. Like, you can't take it. Like, you will, you may outsmart me. You may be taller or whatever. You'll never outwork me. Mm. Like, ever in your life. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Well, we know that was your second drive because you already admitted what your first drive was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At the beginning, he told us, I wanted to get the girl, man. I wanted to get the oh, girl. Oh, okay. So. No, straight up. Yeah, no. <laughs> my wife, I'm just, y'all can check out my, my social. My wife is too beautiful for me. Let's just be honest. I'm married up and I'm happy. That's awesome, man. And bottom line is you got the girl, man. Let's listen. That's what we always we always want to know at the end of the movie. Did he get the girl? Yeah. Oh, so that's yeah, awesome yeah. stuff. So, man, tell me, what do you love about the automotive industry? What sets it apart for you? What I love about the automotive industry is basically the fact that you can literally do whatever you want. You can, you know, wash cars, you could sell cars, you could be a manager, you could do HR, you could be a vendor. There's so many different opportunities out mm-hmm. there. And so it's not like you're just stuck. Um, doing this and you will be just stuck if you don't work, but that's only your fault. But there's so many opportunities out there. And I just like the fact that, I mean, it's just, I feel like a very loving community, regardless of the, the little, there's a small percentage out there that probably are terrible and diminished and just aren't really good. But there's so many people in it that are truly there to help and here, you know, to grow and help you grow to become better. So Mm -hmm. I just like all the opportunities and the great influences I've received from it. Yeah, man, you are telling the truth, man. It's like, it's a whole nother life. It seems like it's like a whole nother world, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. Like, almost like some Aladdin type of stuff, right? It's Aladdin. So cool. Oh my right. gosh. <laughs> Will Smith killed me in that movie, bro. No. Man, that Joe is hot. So listen, here's what I want to, cause uh, listen, people want to connect with you. I'm sure after listening to this, man, they're going to want to connect with you. So just give folks a, a quick closing statement. Let them know how they can connect with you. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, let's, let's take this thing to the next level. All right. So guys, I'm Cameron Moore, uh, business development train director with Builder Brand. You can catch me on Facebook at Cameron Builds Brands, uh, YouTube at Cam Builds Brands, Instagram at Cam Builds Brands. And uh, you can also go to CameronBuildsBrands.com. And that's where you can reach me. Um, you know, follow me on social media. I'd love to hear if you guys have any suggestions or any type of videos that you would like help on that I could help you make. Okay. Cool, man. Yeah. So, man, we got to be out there. We got to be making videos, man. They, I remember back in the day, they used, they would say that by the end of 2019, 90% of the internet is going to be video, right? It was some stat that came up and darn it. We almost there. Right. <laughs> and so right. man, even you were part of, and then they, the, the gentleman, when, when Google was first created, who was the gentleman that said, man, either if you're uploading, you're making money. If you're downloading, you're spending money. That's just how it goes. Right. Ooh, so we got to get some more uploading going on, man. And listen, this is, this has been phenomenal. And I, I love doing this millionaire car salesman podcast. And it's funny that you're, uh, you said your, your father said this to you. Um, or so who was it? That oh, yeah, that? yeah, my father. Yeah, yeah he, basically your top five friends you hang out yeah. with or who mm-hmm. you're going to be in life. Exactly. And it's so funny. If you listen to the podcast, you guys have heard me say this before, is that you are the average of the five people who you spend the most time with. And you've just been spending time with L.A. Williams, the blind phone master, and my man Dash Cam Diaries Cameron Moore. <laughs> man, this guy, <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. Lots and lots of fun, man. So it's your turn. Go out there and be a millionaire car salesman. Thanks so much. Much, Cam. Peace out, Girl Scout. I'm oh, just kidding. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like it, you love it, you want more of it, then don't wait for the next money show. Just go to BradleyOnDemand.com and take your career to the next level. Wow, man, I had no idea. See, this is the NC to me, I miss this. To me, this is the kind of podcast because I think you get the motivation, I think you get the knowledge, I think you get what it is that you need um, when we do these uh, kind of podcasts. So, Thank yeah, you so man. much, sir. Yeah, no, thank you for allowing me to join, man. I was I was very uh, you know, very excited when I got that email. 
Cool, man. So, yes, so I, hope, awesome. I hope you heard the passion. 